Thank you.
In case my friends, that's the second reading. In the first, she know. I've lived a life that's full. I've traveled in. Regrets, 
I've had a few But then again Too few to mention I did What I had to do And saw it through Without exception Have planned each charted course, each careful step, and on those byways, oh no, oh no, not me, I did it my way. Yes, there were times. brothers and sisters. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, it can't go Okay. Can you turn it up? God is good.
are slowly flying by. Gonna walk those streets are slowly flying by. We wanna walk those streets are slow. Gonna sing with that chick soul. Gonna walk that streets are slowly flying by. I'm going to walk the real, 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 Christ so real to me. I love him because he gives us the victory. Many people doubt him, but I can do without him. That is why I love him so. He's so real to me. Real, 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 Christ so real to me. I love him. For he gives us the victory. Many people doubt him. I can do without him. That is why I love him so. He's so real to me. To Zion, fly away home. When bright morning, when all the world is over, fly away home. Fly away home. This bright morning, now your work is over. Fly away home. Then when you come, go to...
May it please your Lordship, Reverend Father Vocek, Brother Deacon Ronnie Thwaites, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, good morning and welcome to the Sacred Heart Church. As we gather here for a number of reasons. First of all, as a people of God, to come together in the house of God, to reflect and give thanks for life well lived. We're also here to, to make some kind of sense of this phenomenon called death. Is there hope? And there truly is hope. And today we will be reaffirmed of the hope of the resurrection and the truth of Christ's words, that he is the resurrection and the life. We have nothing to fear, but let us have faith. And so we will begin our program, the order of service is as follows. Before the liturgical service begins, or the mass, we'll have some musical selections, some of Brother Francis's favorites. And then following the musical interlude, we'll have Mr. Lloyd B. Smith, who will give the first tribute, followed by Nicole Allen and Deacon Winston Stewart, after which we'll have son David do the remembrance and then we'll commence the Holy Mass. The one thing that remains the same is change. So the first change in the program is we'll invite Lloyd B. Smith to speak now. Father, and I hope I pronounced the name correctly, Wishtek <laughs> uh, Sefilna, Reverend Deacon Ronnie Thwaites, Mrs. Doreen Tolo, and all the immediate family members, friends. Today I am here to pay tribute not just to a politician or a businessman, an entrepreneur, a family man. I'm also here in my own capacity to pay tribute to a friend. I met Francis way back in the latter part of the 70s. Those were very tumultuous times. And at that time, when I met him, he sought to come to my rescue. As a journalist, I had written a particular editorial that had upset a certain other politician. And I was sued for libel. And being a young man at the time, not knowing where the dickens I was going to find the money to pay a lawyer or to, to, to defend myself in court, Francis came to see me and said, um, Lloyd, don't worry. I will deal with it for you. There were no strings attached. Um, it turned out that the person who was suing me, in fact, was his cousin. So maybe that, <laughs> maybe that helped the situation. Suffice it to say that I never heard another word after that about the libel suit. And from then on, Francis and I developed a very good relationship. But for me, and I speak very frankly, as you all know, what cemented our relationship was the fact that even to this day, Francis as a politician and I as a friend, he never ever asked me 
to write an article or to do anything within my journalistic activities to big him up in any way. In fact, I can recall on some occasions when I had to touch him. And he would see me and smile and say, you, <laughs> you're your friend, bad man. And that was Francis. It was all over. Today, as I entered this hallowed place, and I looked up at the sign down by the road, Francis Toller Road. Interestingly, the other day, a young man at my office asked me, who was Francis Toller? Because, you know, the word had got around. And I outlined to him who Francis was. And then he said, which I found rather interesting, oh, is him them named the stoplight after? I said, no, it is not the stoplight. It's the road. <laughs> Francis trod many roads, some that he should not have taken, and some that he took with much alacrity. And I remember the fact that this particular road, the Long Hill Road, was named after him, that when he first went to Lethe, Word began to spread in a, the Montego Bay community that Francis had gone mad and that in gone, gone live a bush. He turned bush man. Well, interestingly enough, today we see that he had a vision and we can now look at what that vision entailed. That was the nature of Francis. He would not be deterred by anything or anyone. Here is a man who loved, you know, so often we hear about politicians loving poor people. But a lot of that, as you know, is mythology. In the case of Francis Tullum, I know as a fact that he genuinely had a love for the poor people of this country, and particularly so in his constituency. I have watched him with pain in his eyes, sometimes tears welling up in his eyes, when he would speak about the plight of the people, when he would go around and see the poverty-stricken environment in which some of them lived. And he always vowed that he needed to do something about it. The reality, of course, is that in politics, you are not the final person who decides things. It is something called the government. And Francis had tremendous difficulty dealing with that. In fact, one of his greatest concerns when we would often converse together, he, he always wanted to see a Jamaica that was united. He always wanted to see a Jamaica where laborites and comrades could live together in unity. And such was the measure of the man that even to this day, he is one of few politicians in Western Jamaica that enjoys very good relationship and enjoyed very good relationship with members of the Jamaica Labor Party because of his demeanor, because of how he operated. This was the measure of the man. Francis, of course, like everybody else, would have faults. He's not, he wasn't perfect. But the reality, is, the reality is that amidst whatever imperfections he may have had, he, in fact, turned out to be someone of tremendous value and worth to the society in which he lived. From studying law in England and coming back and going to the Bahamas to work with Sir Lyndon Pilden, where he could have stayed and enjoyed a lucrative career in law, he came back to Jamaica. And interestingly, one would have thought that he would have decided to settle down in Kingston, because that's his, where he's originally from. But instead, he decided to plant his roots here in the West. And I can say without any hesitation, and I have a lot of authority to say that, in fact, as the governor of the city, Francis came, he saw, he conquered. 
And up to this day, the conquer that I may speak about is not necessarily a physical type of conquering or a mere political type of conquering. The fact is that he conquered the hearts and souls of many, many ordinary people. Everywhere you go and mention Francis's name, the first response usually is, he was a good man. I remember once when I went up to Lethe when he had started the rafting, and he said, Lloyd, you need to experience it. I said, Francis, I'm not a very good swimmer, you know, and I don't like the idea of going on these things. Um, he said, no, man, you think I would make my friend go drown? <laughs> Come, man. So he got one of his supervisors and said, look after Mr. Smith. Um, he's my friend. Put him on one of those. So I, you know, went on the raft and then the guy who was taking me down the river, he, he assumed that I was a tourist. You know, so he said, what's happening, man? <laughs> he said, boy, you know, send me there. <laughs> he said, oh, so who you are, sir? I said, my friend of Francis Solo. And then he looked at me again and he said, oh, you are Mr. Lloyd B. Smith. I said, man, yeah, man, Mr. T, good man. Good man. That was always the reaction where Francis was concerned. Francis loved the Great River, you know. It was part of his psyche, part of his ethos. And perhaps that was what inspired him to go to Lisi, you know. And we have seen what the results have been. I hear that musical selections were done. I missed them, most of them, because I arrived at the Glade. I don't know if any Neil Diamond was sung or played, because Francis loved the Neil Diamond. Sometimes I wonder if it's because they resemble so much, you know, with the same sideburns. <laughs> but anyway, he, he was a fan of um, Neil Diamond. Francis was a man of action. He believed in getting things done. And in some instances, that got him into trouble with his own party, with his own government. Because sometimes he was thinking ahead of them. But he never wavered. And one of the other sterling qualities of my friend is that notwithstanding the slings and arrows of outrageous misfortune that attended him, even in the political arena, he never turned his back on the People's National Party to which he belonged. And that tells you the measure of a man who believed in loyalty, who believed in staying true to the course. I just want to read to you very quickly, because years ago, Francis, as we had over many discussions, Francis, wanted to convince me that he really was genuinely concerned about the poor of this land. And so in 1972, when he won his first seat in St. James Central, and he went to Parliament to deliver his first budget speech. Interestingly, it was on a Thursday, March 21st, 1972. Sorry, a Tuesday, rather, March 21st, 1972. That was, and this is some of what he said. In fact, these were his final words in his budget speech. This country, and until we can solve that problem, what was the problem, Mr. Speaker? I believe that any other problem, including violence, family planning, and all those other problems, until we take the mother, the father, and nine children out of one room, our problems will continue. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. And he was, was his closing remarks in his maiden speech in Parliament. And that, to me, in a real way, encapsulates what was 
Francis's vision for the people, the importance of a family structure, which unfortunately Jamaica still does not, a nucleus of a family, then we are doomed to fail. He was also very passionate about education. Let us not forget that the environment in which people live very oftentimes determine their mentality, their attitudes, their values. And it is no secret in Jamaica, unfortunately, that because so many of our people live in squalor and degradation and filth in some cases, that the minds of these people very often are so adversely affected. Francis cared about that, and he wanted to make a difference. He tried. He succeeded in some instances, and he may have failed in others. But in the final analysis, he tried. Francis, I will miss him. He had a very good sense of humor, right? Um, Deacon Fitz. <laughs> Um, I saw where you wrote recently where he had a wicked sense of humor um, when he went to St. George's College and this handsome, debonair, swashbuckling um, guy of all the girls swooning, Doreen. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, I want to pause and pay tribute to Francis's widow because I was part of the final journey of Francis. And I saw a woman who was totally dedicated to her husband. I saw a woman who made every effort to make sure that his last days were spent in reasonable comfort. And I commend you for that, Doreen, because it is not an easy job to control Francis, you know. Uh, you, you all know that sometimes. <laughs> but Doreen, you did a fine job. I will always remember the great river when I remember Francis, Old Man River. And it's interesting that Francis Toller Road, having begun here and ended up at Lethe, that he died in Lethe beside the river that he left. And you know, in Greek mythology, the word Lethe is one of several rivers. And in the case of Lethe, it is supposed to be the river of forgetfulness or oblivion. In other words, when someone died, he or she would drink of the water of Lethe. And all the past, everything would have disappeared and the person would have gone into a new dispensation. This may somewhat um, have some problems with his Catholicism, <laughs> but I do believe that on the day that Francis died, and Doreen will forgive me if I mention this, that he died in the arms of his last son, Matthew. Yes, he did. Heartbeat. Think of that. And so today, we say farewell to a man who lived. A man who believed in sacrificing his own life for the betterment of his fellow men. A man who we all loved and cherished. And as I close in the words of Shakespeare, these very telling words that ring so resoundedly in my mind when I thought of how I should end my tribute to him. His life was gentle, and the elements so mixed in him that nature might stand up and say to all the world, this was a man. Farewell, Francis. Oh, oh, I'm trying to.
Members of the clergy, Mrs. Tolo, the entire family, Matthew, how could you have done this to me? To follow after this tribute, I could only think of one song that Dwight did so beautifully in capturing the life of this man. Forgive me if I have to just read the first two verses. And now the end is here. And so I face the final curtain. My friend, I'll make it clear. I state my case of which I'm certain. Too few to mention. I did what I had to do. I saw it through without exemption. I planned each course, each careful step along the byway, and more, much more. I did it. I did it my way. Mr. Tolo did it his way. My first recollection of Mr. Tolo would have been sometime in the late 1970s, and I know I'm dating myself. I remember seeing this very tall, elegant man alighting from a car in, at my grandmother's gate in Granville on a Sunday morning. He was there to visit his constituency of, as it then was, Central St. James. He wore tennis shorts and a white shirt. I think they called it a Fred Perry shirt at the, in those times. I can't remember a time when Mr. Tolo was not part of either my mother's and my dear father's life, my life or my sister's life. Mr. Con Mr. Tolo was a constant in our lives. We may not have seen each other often, we may not have spoken often, but there was a silent understanding that when the time came, one will be there for the other. I recall very vividly one day going to his offices at Gloucester Avenue. And after greeting Mr. Tolo, Mrs. Tolo looked at me and Janice and said, you mean Uncle Francis? But I never called him that. It was never Uncle Francis, but he treated me just like that. And I saw him just like that. Mrs. Tolo, with that remark, would have come to recognize that there was a tightly woven thread between my family and Mr. Tolo. And that thread was knotted by the politics and the work and the mission of the People's National Party. He having gone on to becoming a vice president of the party. I won't focus today on his work as a minister of government. That time will come. What I will say though, and remind, that most of you may or may not know that my father served with him as a councillor when he was member of parliament for Central St. James. And I do not believe anyone can dispute the service that he gave, the best service so far to that constituency. To this day, there are people who vote for the People's National Party because of Mr. Tolo. I have canvassed supporters for the PNP, leaning supporters, supporters on the fence, and they would remark, Somewhat after there some reluctance in supporting that candidate and you're begging the vote, they would respond, all right, you know, some go vote, but me only the vote because I'm Mr. Tolo. That's the measure of the man. Whilst his charisma and charm and that charm of little David was undeniable, the lasting impact on these constituencies, constituents was that he kept them at the center of everything that he did. Mr. Tolo epitomized the words political representation. 
for he was committed to uplifting the lives of the ordinary Jamaican. He was just simply a man who deeply loved the people and who the people loved. If all our political representatives could be half what Mr. Tolo was in his steadfast commitment and service to his constituents, Jamaica would be in safe hands. As it was never about him, it was always about the people he was called to serve. Mr. Tolo had a profound impact on my own life, that of my professional life as an attorney at law, which was obviously spawned by the thread of the politics that connected us. Perhaps, I think, had I not seen Mr. Tolo on that day, January 2001, I would have charted a different course. Whilst my parents had raised me up to know that whatever I did, wherever I studied, whatever I studied, the final destination would be my island home of Jamaica. I believe that Mr. Tolo contributed to its manifestation. Because the more I live, the more I see, the more I experience, I recognize that nothing happens by accident. So there was this day in January 2001, I ran into Mr. Tolo at the courthouse in Cambridge. That could have never been an accident. So after returning from England as a barrister, I was having a difficulty finding my feet and settling into practice. I felt unsettled. And in January 2001, I, re I resigned from the firm in Montego Bay that I was associated with for that resignation to take effect at the end of that month. I happened to have been in Cambridge finalizing a few matters. It was a legal aid assignment. When I arrived at the courthouse, out of all the people that I should see was Mr. Tolo. Mr. Tolo was there with a member of his staff who was before the court. But he was not just there to stand by that person and just be there for moral support. He was there to represent this man as counsel. Now, for those who know Mr. Tolo and about his practice of the law, Mr. Tolo, in his latter part of his practice, was a chamber lawyer. He's not a lawyer who went to court. But he did. Duty had called. He acted as an advocate that day. Which speaks to his service and commitment to the voiceless. So he sat in counsel's row. We chatted. And he asked me to stay after court, and I did. And he said to me in his usual way, so what are you up to now? And I told him of my plans to go to London to complete pupillage and thereafter return to Jamaica. I don't know how I ended up in Mr. Toller's car, but I ended up with him. I, don't, I can't recall what happened to the car that I had driven. But one thing I recall, he said, come with me. And for those of us, most of us here know that Mr. Tuller rarely drives. He got into the car and he drove me around Eastern Hanover, Cops, Leafy, and, and the surrounding area. And he looked up and he said to me, see the English countryside, where are you going? Tana your yard. Yes, and then he said to me, he took me to the square in Lethe, he showed me the office right on the left, and he said, come and join me in practice here in Lethe. I'll make you a junior partner. And he sealed the deal by saying to me, and we'll establish an office in Montego Bay. He was able to move a young attorney with plans for the big city and bright lights of London to a rural practice in Lethe. 
That was the persuasion that he had. But I'm happy that he did. I'm happy that he persuaded me. I'm thinking he knew exactly what he's doing. He did not want to take the risks of one other professional lost to Jamaica and those bright lights of these big cities. We have lost too many to England and America and Canada and all these far-flung places, but Mr. Tullo may have saved me. So my office was prepared and decorated to make me comfortable in this rural village by none other than my cheering squad, Mommy and Daddy. I spent one full year in Lethe with Mr. Tullo. That year grounded me, settled me, and prepared me for what was to come. During that year, I got the opportunity to see Mr. Tullo's amazing work ethic. I learned how to serve your clients in a deliberate way and meeting them where they are with what they had and simply just respecting them. More than anything else, I learned how to build relationships because as he said to me, your success in the law will never be about how much law you know, but about the relationships that you will build. Mr. Tolo built relationships with government agencies that were relevant to the work that he did at that time. And I was able to benefit from the same relationships. He was hands-on in his approach. It was incredible. Nothing was below him, absolutely nothing, once he was going to get what he wanted for his clients. So in 2001, he had a project, and that project was land titling to ensure that, oh, that persons in informal communities and formal communities got their title. And he did this relentlessly. So, many a Sunday evenings, Mr. Tuller and I would make treks to Norwood and Rosites and Flankers to find those occupants, owners of properties who did not have their titles. To get them into the office to sign those documents that were required to be signed. So he could take them on a Tuesday to the Ministry of Housing. And we had a trek every Tuesday. The schedule was centered around his appointment at the Senate at two in the afternoon. So we journeyed out with Richard, the driver, and we drove straight to Kingston, hardly ever stopping. The first stop was the Ministry of Housing. He came out with a pile of files and you walk straight into Mr. Domville's office and you went through meticulously with every matter. And then the next stop was NHDC to ensure that the projects were going well, the infrastructure was in place so that we could move to the titling stage for these ordinary Jamaicans to give them just that one chance. The last stop was Hanover Street in downtown just before he would go to Parliament at two that afternoon, a full day, serving the people. Now, when I came into practice, in my own practice, I did not recognize that most lawyers don't turn up at these offices. They send the bearer. But Mr. Tolo went. He was not afraid to do the work of the bearer. So, that was 2001. I spoke with Mr. Tolo. I told him I couldn't practice anymore in this rural village. And the promise of Montego Bay was too long in coming. He understood. He was not judgmental, he allowed, he allowed me to go. Only to return again in 2014. I don't know how it happened again, but it happened. This time, I established the firm 
Allen and Co., Attorneys at Law and Notary Public at 26 Church Street in Montego Bay. And this time, Mr. Toller was a consultant attorney and the notary public. He set up, his, the office was set up. He had his space. Nobody went in that office. I'm not sure if he used that office 10 times, but what he knew that that office was there. We understood each other. Then I moved offices to Ford Street and he moved with me, but with the empty office. And that office remained unoccupied until July 2020. I was never ready to have anyone else occupy that office until I was satisfied that he, was re he had really finished with practicing law. And in 2020 as well, I saw, I was commissioned as a notary public upon his recommendation. So the firm fortuitously could remain Allen & Co, attorneys at law and notary public. We also, we not only had a professional relationship, we also had a political relationship one that was understood. I played an integral role in his campaign team in the 2000 bid for Northwest St. James. I walked the hills and valleys with him. He lost by a mere 500 and odd votes, which he could have easily won, easily won. But he was not prepared to do what so many do now. He was going to secure the votes by nothing else but walking, 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 and meeting those electors and seeking the, their support on his record, nothing less. His integrity was unquestionable, unquestionable in the politics. No one can point a finger. But, as I said earlier, nothing happens by accident. It was not to be. It was no time for him to close and the chapter on his political career, to pull the curtain down. The time had come. The time had come for him to focus on and have a deeper understanding of his service to his God, and his church, and he was ordained shortly thereafter. But that thread will never be broken. The political thread that has bound us together, that knot, that family knot, will never go away because he played a remarkable role, not only in my own development, but so too Janice's, whose first job out of college was as his personal assistant. She took up the post, having decided to forego walking for her own graduation, but instead dashed home to work as his personal assistant when he was Minister of Tourism. Today, Janice is, Senate, is a senator and opposition spokesperson on tourism. The thread will never be broken. Today, my father will say to say, Francis, you finished the race, you win. How the politics? Boy Glover, it needs some steady hands. I will end by referring to 2 Timothy 4, verse 7, Mrs. Stolo, he fought the good fight. He has finished the race. He has kept the faith. May his soul rest in eternal sweet peace.
your lordship. Bishop Burchell, Reverend Father Rotek, Reverend Deacon Ronitrix, Reverend Deacon Bolin Forrest. This day was made by the Lord. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. My dear friends, relatives and friends, Jamaica has lost a stalwart, a statesman, and a reputable Catholic deacon. I have wrestled for some time with my thoughts to how I came to know, meet Francis. As a boy, I had the opportunity to have seen his brother, who was one of Jamaica's best spinners. And I was so impressed with myself to have seen such a great cricketer. The first time I saw Francis was at a political meeting at Mount Salem in Montego Bay, I think in 1976. He was the guest speaker, and I was equally impressed with him as I was for his brother, but for a different reason and thought, I have to get to know this man more intimately. First, he became the family attorney in whom we had extreme confidence and he expedited his work on our behalf with due diligence. This man was always looking out for us. He always seemed to have our interests at heart. He would call me and he would say, Stu, don't you want the property to buy? And I would, rely, I would reply, Francis, you know we don't have the money. Other times, he would call concerning other properties that he knew very well what would suffice for the type of business we conducted. And he would like to see us be the landlord of, a, of that property. Somehow we seem to have gravitated to each other more intimately than we both realized and that intimacy made us friends his beautiful wife Doreen and my wife Pam also beautiful became close and that augured well for a family friendship founded on trust and confidence. We started to visit each other's home, mostly at his home, as he would always wanted us was to come up, meaning to say, come up to Leithy, where he lives. My family came very attached to him. He was now our family advisor and they had a lot of respect for him. We spent many hours at Green, especially when we had uh, friends from abroad who would take, um, and we would take them rafting and spend the day there, bathing in the river.
he had a tremendous admiration for me as a deacon. Always encouraging me. And as the saying goes, bigging me up. He was proud of me being on the altar doing my duties. And I thought to myself, you can do the same. You can do the same. You would be a, an invaluable resource to the church in you becoming a deacon. But I never told him this. However, when the next deacon program was started, I wrote to the bishop of Montego Bay recommending him as a potential candidate for the program and he was accepted. When he became a deacon, I recall him saying to me, Stu, I am accustomed to serve. The difference is, I now serve a different master. In my In my humble opinion, I think he meant not the Prime Minister, not the political party to which he has been affiliated, but the Almighty and all powerful God. To God be the glory. The Cantala served at Chester Castle, St. Agnes Church in Chester Castle. And then he went to St. Mary in Cambridge. He was a very dynamic. He was very dynamic in his ministry at St. Mary. He went into the local community using his political ingenuity. He brought members into that community, into the church at Cambridge, providing for their spiritual needs through teaching the faith, counseling, and other necessary support. The Lord said, when I am lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Well, he certainly lifted up Francis Tuller, Deacon Tuller. And in so doing, Deacon Tuller draw many unto him. The indigent. The indigent. Are these the people that he represents in his community? These are the people he represents in his community. The word no doesn't seem to enter his vocabulary once there is a need to be met for the poor. More recently, in spite of the downturn in his rafting business at Lethe, he took on the challenge of building accommodation for one indigent family on his land there at Lethe, providing food, clothing, and having to finance fares and lunch money for children to go to school. The Cantala, good deeds goes before him. 
as they are numberless. May the good Lord reward him, you good and faithful servant, as the Lord said. In as much as you did it for the least of my people, you did it for me. As time went on, and faced with health challenges, I took up some of the slack as a deacon, serving between Chester Castle and Cambridge, St. Mary at Cambridge. He would insist that Pam and I, my wife, stop at Lethe after leaving St. Mary and brief him on the details, update him on what happened, who was present and who wasn't. And when it was time for us to leave, like he still wanted to hear more, he insisted that we should stay on. In spite of ill health, he would go to mass here, a second heart, with Doreen. Many times under the duress of pain. There's an excited his personality, you know. I don't know if many of you know about it. But like the Smith attests to it. He's very witty. Jovial. And teasing. Teasing, you know what I mean? Like to tease. And he had a special tease for me. I'll tell you about after. He was concerned about confession. And who he wanted to hear his confession. Preferring, of course, to go to a priest that doesn't know him. So I said to him, well, you don't have a problem. You know, go to Kingston. He says, you, you're joking. He said, all the priests them up, they know me, man. Every one of them. He said, boy, I said, bad for you then. Anyway, he told us about an event. About going to Florida for visit or business or what have you. And then he would go to confession in Florida. And he exclaimed just, oh, he, he felt relieved. You know, when he left the confessional. Anyway, he says, on one of these occasions, after I went to confession and the priest gave him absolution, and he was just about ready to leave the confessional when the priest said to him, so, so Francis, when you're going back to Jamaica? <laughs> now my tease was a different uh, sort of tease. It seemed to be exclusive for me and for me only. Every time I'm leaving Lethe after a visit, or probably after Ian Doreen will be leaving my business place. Doreen and Pam would be probably walking back to the car, you know? And then Ian and me, both of us would be following behind. And then he would lean over 
lean over into my ears. And he would say, Stew, you still have fooled around that Indian child, chick. I said, Pardon? He said, You still have fooled around that Indian chick. I said, Which Indian chick? He said, The same one, man, the one with the long hair. I thought to myself, Something wrong with your brain, you know. <laughs> but when I think about it, I thought to myself that this is the sort of joke only a friend can tease you about. Francis Tuller, Deacon. Francis Tuller has lived a good life. He has lived a blessed life. He has lived a life impregnated with good deeds. As an attorney at law, a politician, an accomplished businessman, and a reputable Catholic deacon. He has undoubtedly captured the admiration and the love and the respect of those he encountered. May his soul rest in eternal peace. May I take this opportunity on behalf of the fraternity of deacons that is the deacons in the Diocese of Montego Bay, in the Archdiocese of Kingston, and in the Diocese of Mandeville, express our sincere and very respectful condolence to Mrs. Tuller And may I also, on behalf of my own family, express our condolence to you, Dor, and to Matthew. Thank you. Francis Anthony Tullo. On August 5th, 1940, in the then quiet, peaceful, in the then quiet, peaceful and affluent community of Vineyard Town, Samuel Vincent Tullo, eminent Alpha Band Master and his charming wife, Rhea Ni Henriquez, became the proud parents of another son, Francis. Young Tuller was educated at Ralna Proprietary School and St. George's College, where he excelled not only in academics, but also in the field of sports. He loved cricket with a passion, making the All Sunlight team two consecutive years. His crowning experience was his selection, while still a schoolboy, to represent the St. George's Old Boys side at the Senior Cup level and hitting a memorable 121 runs against the then all-powerful Railway Cricket Club. From St. George's College, he moved on to Lincoln's Inn, where he was called to the bar in 1963. His career as a legal luminary started in 1963 on Duke Street. He left in 1964 for the Bahamas, where he joined the legal firm L.O. Pindling & Company, 
There he worked as a legal professional assistant. He returned to Jamaica in 1969 to join the firm Don Cox and Orrit in Montego Bay. It was not long before he set up his own office, Tolo Wolf and Company, soon to become Tolo Wolf Ford and Company, but with the departure of Ford, it was back to Tolo Wolf and Company. The year 1971 signaled a turning point in the life of this brilliant, forthright, shrewd, good-natured, and tolerant son of the soil. Believing that politics offered a better opportunity of helping people, especially those less fortunate and in need, he entered the political arena for the first time as a People's National Party caretaker for Central St. James. At the time, that was the largest constituency in the parish. Young Tullow was faced with quite a challenge, and to the surprise of many, Tuller defeated the JLP's Tony Hart, a leading businessman in Montego Bay, by a comfortable majority of 2,255 votes in the February 29, 1972 general election. A remarkable feat. No wonder he was dubbed Little David. <laughs> He won the hearts of the people of St. James with his outspokenness, his recognition for their plight, and his desire to help them help themselves. In 1976, the number of constituencies increased from three to four, namely St. James East Central, Northwestern, West Central, and Southern. Tolo was asked to contest the newly created West Central constituency. Once again, he defeated the JLP challenger, but this time it was Winton, Winston P. Waif. The margin was 2,983 votes. Now by polling 6,708 votes, he increased his 1972 majority by 728 votes. Shortly after his appointment as Minister of State with responsibility for transport in the ministry, of public utilities and transport, he closed his legal practice. However, he returned to law as Francis Tuller and Company soon after the 1980 general election, which he never ever contested. In 1983, although not present at the West Central St. James Constituency Conference, he was elected chairman. That position he held until his retirement from active politics in 1986 when he decided to concentrate on his family and developing his tourism business with his wife, Doreen. Together, they added to the tourism product an employment landscape with river rafting in Lethe, Hanover, which expanded into a multi-award winning attraction from Princess Cruise Lines and other prestigious tour suppliers across the island for their business, Great River Rafting and Plantation Tours, which would then become the umbrella for mountain valley rafting, Great River Adventures, and Jamaica's longest zip line tour, Zip Line Adventures. Two years later, the incumbent PNP faced with a crisis of leadership in Eastern Hanover, badly needed a candidate who would and could unite the factions and retain the seat in the upcoming 1993 general election. An election I know my mother would remember. Tullo was the right person However, after nearly 13 years out of parliament and the head of a striving tourism business, this selfless Jamaican, when called upon to serve once again, accepted the challenge and crossed into the parish of the Hanoverians, uniting the PNP factions and swept to victory on March 30th, 1993 against our now Deputy Prime Minister, Dr. Horace Chan. His final and most remarkable achievement came four years later when he crowned his unique political career with yet another amazing victory. In 1997, as the incumbent PMP second term in office entered its final year, the constituency of St. James Northwestern was bitterly divided and made worse by the fact that the sitting member of parliament, Carl Miller, had indicated to the party that due to ill health, he could not continue to represent the constituency. Now, it would have been foolhardy of the incumbent member of parliament for Hanover Eastern to leave the safety of his constituency to contest a borderline seat in another parish. The only difference is that the incumbent MP for Eastern Hanover was no less a person than Francis Anthony Tullum, 
So once again, not to be daunted by the competitiveness of the contest, Francis, in his inimitable style, took up the challenge. For him, December 18, 1997, turned out to be a date that he would remember for his entire life as he created history in so many ways after defeating Dr. Harris Chan a second time. The following achievements were indeed unique. Francis is the only Jamaican parliamentarian to defeat the same candidate, Dr. Harris Chan, in two different parishes in consecutive elections. He is the only member of parliament to have successfully contested four general elections in four different constituencies competing in two different parishes. He is the only member of parliament to have served four terms and never, ever sat on the opposition side of parliament. The years were 1972 to 1980 and 1993 to 1999. Now, I'm not so sure how many Jamaicans are aware of the fact that this great Jamaican was a vice president of the People's National Party. The story is told of young Tullop being visited by two very extreme members of the PNP, left wing, on a Saturday morning in September 1977, on the day of the vice presidential election. He was advised of the need to have a vice president representing the western end of Jamaica by these two gentlemen who persuaded him to challenge the incumbent although there was no vacancy. Can you imagine? Francis Tullock, a known moderate, opposing a member of his own ilk, putting his party and the comrades in Region 6 first, he took up what could be regarded as a Herculean task and ended up defeating another great Jamaican, William V. Isaacs, his representation of several Western Jamaican constituencies redounded to the development not only of the people and communities he represented, but for the residents of other adjoining constituencies and communities as well. There was no cause too great or too small for him to champion in the process, earning him the nickname Little David. Quite apart from his ministerial responsibility for tourism, he was known to be a tireless campaigner for the advancement of education and lent his efforts to the planning and implementation of the massive school building program undertaken by successive governments led by the People's National Party since 1972. Francis was integral to the formation of the Jamaica Union of Travelers, Travelers Association, JUTA, and the Jamaica Cooperative Automobile and Limousine Tours Limited, Jacob, and was keen to ensure that there was space for small operators to earn from the industry, whether through transportation, craft, accommodations, or attractions. Tuller's capacity propelled him into key governmental roles, where he championed path-breaking policies and programs, which set a new standard for ministerial operations. Among his achievements then was the establishment of resort boards that gave the people a direct say in how tourism is developed in their respective resorts. His record of service was impressive. He was a well-respected parliamentary secretary in the Ministry of Labor and Employment. Minister of State in the Minister of Transport, Minister of State in Tourism before being Minister of Tourism in 1997. As Minister of Tourism, he is held in very high esteem at all levels in the tourism sector. In addition to working with the Master Plan for Tourism Development, he pushed for the revival of the craft sector and enhance, enhancements of resort towns. Minister Tuller also played a pivotal role in wooing Spanish investors to Jamaica. Francis was appointed Honorary Consul of the Russian Federation in Montego Bay on May 27, 2014. He will be remembered as a man to still the quarrels of factions, to soothe the vanity of his colleagues, and to sustain the faltering hour and the hallmarks of this great giant of a politician. A man of perfect integrity, great ability, and marked persistence. I have always been struck by the dignity of his bearing, the grace of his dictions, of his diction, and the ladies will say, the charm of his voice. So sorry, Mom. His political colleague and great personal friend, 
Lloyd B. Smith recalls Francis Tullough as a charismatic politician who used his legal skills along with his compassion for the poorer classes in the society to create avenues of benefit for them to make their own lives better. To this unique politician, anger turns the mind out of doors and bolts the door. That is, it interferes with clear thinking. No wonder he is so thoughtful, considerate of interest, highly self-controlled and restrained. I can say without fear of contradiction that posterity will be kind to this distinguished statesman. He will stand in history beside great Jamaicans like Alexander Bustamante, Bustamante Norman Washington Manley, Hugh Lawson Shearer, Mike and Manley, who he was often compared to, Edward Siaga, and Percival James Patterson, perhaps even higher. Francis Tuller's life was devoted to the articulation of the concerns of Jamaicans, particularly the people of Jamaica, and to their representation in the halls of power. He was an indefatigable champion of the working class and a tireless advocate for the complete, integrated, and inclusive development of Jamaica's tourism industry and its critical support structures and institutions. For Francis, there could be no real development of any sector without the involvement of and real benefits for the people being at the center of the, of the development process. He had three wives, but was lastly married to Doreen Perry Ellis on August 19, 1989, in this very same church. He is the father of four sons, Tony, David, Andrew, and Matthew, and two daughters, Gina and Erica. He was brother to Dorothy, Keith, Carl, Horace, Yola, Marjorie, Anne-Marie, and Vernon, predeceased by Keith, Vernon, Horace, and Carl. Marjorie, our dear beloved Aunt Jean, said that when Francis set his mind to something, especially for his family and for Jamaica, he just never stopped until he got it done. He was diagnosed with prostate cancer in the late 1990s and can, re and can be remembered for saying that he asked God for 10 years, you know, right now I am on borrowed time, way over borrowed time. Diabetes came into the picture sometime later, posing additional health challenges. He passed peacefully in the presence of his nurse and son Matthew on Thursday, June 23, 2022. Now Francis will be saluted as a legend, a politician, a Catholic deacon, a lawyer, a cricketer, a businessman, a charismatic tall glass of personality with a handsome cherry for a face. But today, I salute Francis the husband, the father, the brother, the uncle, the cousin, and the dear friend that he was to us all. May his soul rest in eternal peace. Praise God. Mike 
weakest. Praise God. Please stand. The heavens are telling the glory of God And all creation is shouting for joy Come dance in the forest, come play in the field And sing, sing to the glory of the Lord Praise for the sun, the bringer of day He carries the light of the Lord in his rays The moon and the stars who light up the way Unto your throne the heavens are telling the glory of God And all creation is shouting for joy Come dance in the forest, come play in the field And sing, sing to the glory of the Lord Praise for the wind that blows through the trees the seas, mighty storms, the gentlest breeze They blow where they will, they blow where they please To please the Lord The heavens are telling the glory of God And all creation is shouting for joy Come dance in the forest, come play in the field and sing, sing to the glory of the Lord. Please face the entrance of the church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Praise be God, the Father of all, of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation. He comforts us in all our afflictions and those enables us to comfort those who are in trouble with the same consolations we have received from him. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. I bless the remains of our brother Francis with holy water. that recalls his baptism of which St. Paul writes, all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. By baptism into his death, we are buried together with him, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead, by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life, for if we have been united with him by likeness to his death, so shall we, unite, shall we be united with him by likeness to his resurrection. On the day of his baptism, Francis put on Christ. In the day of Christ's coming, may he clothe with glory. Telling the glory of God And all creation is shouting for joy Come dance in the forest, come play in the field And sing, sing to the glory of the Lord Praise for the fire who gives us his light The warmth of the sun to brighten our night He dances with joy his spirit so bright, he sings of you. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and all creation is shouting for joy. 
Come dance in the forest, come play in the field, and sing, sing to the glory of the Lord. We believe that Jesus is the light of our lives. We symbolize his presence that is Easter candle. And so, say with me. Behold the light of Christ. As long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Yes, we believe that Jesus is the anointed one, the Son of God, he who is to come into the world. Our life is even now with Christ in God. When Christ, our Lord, appears, then we shall appear with Him in glory. If we have died with Christ, we believe that we are also to be with Him. He who raised up the Lord will raise up Francis and us, along with Jesus, and place us in His presence. Both in life and in death, we are the Lord's. We know, we know that Christ, once raised from the dead, will never die again. Death has no power over him. We know also that our own death is the beginning of our participation in the victory of Christ. We believe that God is faithful to his covenant, and he will give us a fullness of life on the last day. Let us pray. Grant we pray, O merciful God, our share eternal happiness to the soul of our departed brother, thank you. And all of this for the gift of ministering in the earth. Grant, O Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the earth of the Holy Spirit, one God Amen. Please be seated. Are in the hand of God and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish, they seemed to have died, and their departure was thought to be a disaster, and their going from us to be their destruction, but they are at peace. For though in the sight of others they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good because God tested them and found them worthy of himself. Like gold in the furnace, he tried them. And like a sacrificial burnt offering, he accepted them. In the time of their visitation, they will shine forth and will run like sparks through the stubble. They will govern nations and rule over peoples and the Lord will reign over them forever. Those who trust in him will understand truth, and the faithful will abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are upon his holy ones, and he watches over his elect. The word of the Lord. Lord. 
words, my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me down to lie in pastures green. He leadeth me the quiet waters by. Sing with me, my soul. My soul, he doth restore again, and me to walk doth make within the paths of righteousness. He This is granddaughter Taylor was supposed to do the second reading today, but due to some extremely, extremely unfortunate circumstances, she was unable to be here and she asked me to convey her sentiment. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart, even though our outer self is wasting away, for our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. The word of the Lord. 
Please stand for the gospel acclamation. Alle, alle, alle. the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me alle 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 no alleluia alle 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 no ya alle 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 no ya alle be with you and with your spirit. a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John Glory to you O oh Lord now Jesus said to his people I am the living bread that came down from heaven whoever eats of this bread will live forever and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh the people then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. And whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. And whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and then they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today, we are gathered here together to celebrate the life of Deacon Francis Toro. Celebrate the presence of God in his life and in our life. Uh, the readings that we are invited to listen today, the first, the first reading from the Book of Wisdom uh, is inviting us to, to be aware that our life, even it looks so that we are dying, is not ended. Because our souls are in the hands of God. We will be still alive. And today, we are coming here, we are gathering here to celebrate the life of Francis, not the life that is finished, the life that is continue without uh, the physical body that gives us sometimes trouble on different ways, but the life that there is no pain, no difficulties on the side of the body, the life uh, with God, our Creator. Now, I choose the Gospel uh, about the Eucharist. You know, each one of us won't leave something behind. 
Uh, we already hear many words about uh, Francis as a politician uh, in different areas, very active, helping people to uh, get their titles for lands, uh, helping in the school system. One of the last projects, of course, is Cambridge, just beside the church, the kindergarten uh, that uh, is functioning up, up to now, uh, preparing children to go to the school, starting their education. But one of the last projects and this last mission that like, just come to my head during this celebration is this that he become a deacon. For these last years of his life, he found or he discovered how important is the Eucharist. And yes, my presence here from foreign lands from Poland is reminding us that we don't have enough priests in Jamaica uh, to, to serve. We are bringing them from outside, but to help that people will be able to receive Jesus in the Holy Communion, we have many deacons instituted in this uh, church in Jamaica. One of them was Francis, because as a priest, I can't go every Sunday to all of those churches that belong to me. Without uh, this is the, the mission of the deacon, that he will do the, celebrate the liturgy, uh, giving the opportunity for people to receive Holy Communion. Holy Communion means real Jesus, a live Jesus. That's why we celebrate his life with the Mass, because that was uh, his very important uh, part of his life. He didn't give up, saying, okay, I am retired and it's time for me to, to rest. He take the next missions and the next missions to uh, supply people with this what they really need. And let's see this today in this celebration, in this Eucharist, in this thanksgiving for the life of Francis, as a part of his uh, testament that he lived with us, how important uh, is the Eucharist, how important was for him the Eucharist. Of course, he was participating in his Catholic Church in many ways. I know him only only last seven years, but that, that's, I think, so enough, especially that during our retreat, Kersi, we every Sunday come and share his life as a Catholic uh, from the beginning, from the competition as a little boy who will be the first as an altar server in the church to prepare the church up to the moment that he become deacon and serve on different way. Today we are invited to recognize uh, this for ourselves. Uh, this last year, he was receiving communion every uh, Saturday evening. And it's not me I visit him, the wife, Doreen, will come to Mass, Take the Holy Communion for him and carry uh, that he will be able to receive on the weekly basis uh, his Jesus, our Jesus, to be united with him, to live with him. Sometimes, yes, he gives some trouble, he was shouting sometimes at home, uh, but you can imagine what will happen if he will not receive Jesus. Jesus gave him the strength. Jesus was able to keep his faith. And even just last the Sunday before he died, when I went there to do anointing of the sick, this preparation for the for the, the last moments, 
uh, he was unable to talk. But when I asked him, because you want to receive Jesus, that was yes, that he strongly still said that he won't receive his Jesus. Let us see in this celebration. We are not we are not coming here to be sad, to cry. Yes, we lose him in this physical way. But if we hear how helpful he was for the people here in Jamaica when he was restricted with his physical body. How much more helpful he will be for us now when he's not restricted anymore. But the message about the Eucharist, let's stay with us. Let's, let me see uh, that one of those last, last missions to be ordained as a deacon uh, in this pretty old age uh, to still serve, to make Jesus available for others. Uh, let me recognize this message for us too. How important Jesus, sacrament of Eucharist, his real body and blood should be for us to feed ourselves with it. The gospel that we hear. Jesus is saying, if you will eat my flesh, you will have eternal life. If you are, will not eat my flesh, you will have no eternal life. Today, let's celebrate and rejoice uh, the life of Francis, the life of Deacon, the life of father, grandfather, uh, uncle, politician, that for him, the Eucharist was so important. And let's recognize this as a message for us too. Amen. My brothers and sisters, please stand. Reverend Francis Anthony Tallon, Deacon of the Church, that his faithful ministry may be rewarded with eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those who mourn their loss, especially Francis Tallon, that grief may be lightened by the risen Christ and his promise to unite us again in our heavenly home, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace of a well-prepared death, that when God calls, we will be ready with the lamp of faith alight and our baptismal robe unstained, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the forgiveness of sins, that our prayers and the offering of this atoning sacrifice will bring all the departed to the full vision of God's glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. God of our salvation, you are one of my Hear our cries, we name of your Son, your risen Son, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin and the peace that endureth thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow blessings all mine with ten thousand great is thy faithfulness Great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be gracious, O Lord, to fancy your servant and deacon for those salvation we offer you in sacrifice. That are in the flesh, he ministered to Christ your Son, so that he may be raised up, to, to, raised up with your faithful servant, the everlasting glory, to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us run to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. It is truly right and just for our and our salvation. Always and ever way to give you thanks. Lord, for the Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In the name of hope of the blessed resurrection and so on. That though sudden by the uncertainty of death, might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, 
like a stream that ended. And when this heart the dwelling burns to dust, and the eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts of powers of heaven, we see you at your glory, and without you. <laughs> Hosanna, 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 Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity 
together with Francis, our Pope, Virgil, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Francis, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For this poor and unwritten and human, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The of God, we pray for our divine Grant us a grand peace in our peace, and by the help of your mercy, draw us free from sin and save from all the spirit. As we await the blessed hope when the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the, kingdom, the power, power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, and said to your apostles, Peace are you, my peace are given. you. You come in our sins and the good of your church, and grace us to grant our peace and union upon your way. We have a name for help our neighbor. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all day. And, and with, with your Jesus. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Sin of the heaven Lamb of God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Sins of the world, have mercy. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
One bread, one body, one, one Lord of all, one cup of blessing which we bless, and we, though many, throughout the earth, we are one body in this one Lord. Gentile or Jew, servant or free, woman or man, no more one bread one body one lord of all one cup of blessing which we should bless and, and we both many throughout the earth we are one body in this one Lord many the gifts many the works one in the Lord of all. One bread, one body, one Lord of all. One cup of blessing which we bless. center of the Lord, who abide in his shadow for life. Say to my God, you're my refuge, my rock, in whom I trust. Please join us if you know the chorus. And he will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the
the sun and hold you in the palm of his hand. You need not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day. Though thousands fall about you, near you it shall not come. And he will raise you up on eagles' wings. Let us pray. Replenished with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, gracious is your grant through the sacrifice that Francis, your servant and deacon, whom you call to be among these who serve your church, once free from the bond of death, they receive a share with those who have ministered well and enter into the joy through Christ our Lord. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother Francis. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again with the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Let us now pray to the Lord for ourselves. May we who mourn be reunited one day with our brother Francis together. May we meet Christ Jesus when he who is our life shall appear in his glory. is near one who loves you to your child who has sight so walk to see in you bless me mother bless your child mother when my Jesus calls me from this world so dark and drear From this wily snares of Satan Shield me, mother, mother dear, mother dearest Dearest mother, tell my Jesus 
We are confident that with all who have died in Christ, he will be raised to life on the last day and live forever with Christ. We thank you for all the blessings you gave him in this life to show your fatherly care for all of us and the fellowship which is ours with the saints in Jesus Christ. Lord, hear our prayer. Welcome our brother Francis to paradise and help us to comfort each other with the assurance of our faith until we all met, meet in Christ to be with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Psalm 116. Together. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. I love the Lord, for he has heard the cry of my appeal. For he has turned his ear to me on the day when I called him. They surround me with snares of death, with the anguish of the tomb. They caught me, sorrow and distress. I called on the Lord's name. How gracious is the Lord and just, how God has compassion. The Lord protects the simple hearts. I was helpless, so he saved me. Not my soul to your rest, for the Lord has been good. He has kept my soul from death and my feet from stumbling. I walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. Praise the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. Francis. May the angels take you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you on your way and lead you into the holy city, Jerusalem. May the choir of angels welcome you and with Lazarus who once was poor, may you have everlasting rest. Amen. Eternal rest, give to him, O Lord. Let, Let the perpetual light shine. shine upon him. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. In a few minutes we just will move uh, to Columbarium, but we will still ask Bishop that he will give us the final blessing here. Mm. 
before the blessing. I just want to say to the Berea family at this time, as you mourn, the Lord Jesus Christ is there with you to, to wipe your tears and to give you the strength. And that one day we will meet with Francis again on the day of resurrection when we all will receive our reward from the Lord. So let us continue to pray for one another. Let us continue to encourage and support one another. And may our faith continue to grow as we reflect on the life of our brother Francis. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
will be rise up on the last day. Comfort us today with the promise as we return the ashes of our brother to the earth. Grand Francis, a place of rest in peace, where the world of dust and ashes has no dominion. Confirm us in our hope that he will be created anew on the day when you will rise him up in glory to live with you and all the saints forever and ever. Amen. For our brother Francis, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary, in their distress, who weep, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. Eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You promised paradise to the repentant thief. Bring Francis to the joys of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Our brother was washed in baptism and was nourished with your body and blood. Grant him a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Comfort us in our sorrow at the death of Francis. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Though we are Francis, deliver his soul from death. Number him among your saints and clothe him with the robe of salvation. To an The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry. All who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will say, I will make the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Who shall send? Here I Thank you. 
Thank you. 